Surrounded by the deep blue Pacific Ocean, many regard Hawaii as a tropical paradise, where the ocean is appreciated for its beauty, recreational opportunities, and is a source of food for the community. Our daily wind-produced waves crashing against bluffs and laving on beaches creates incredible aquatic displays that residents and visitors never tire of viewing or photographing. But when the sea rises and slams onto the shore with unimaginable power, one of nature's most powerful forces is unleashed, and the devastation leaves us awestruck. Located in the center of the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii is the most isolated population center on Earth, surrounded by the ring of fire where the ocean meets the continent. Earthquakes occur because of the planet's moving plates. Hawaii sits on the Pacific plate, which moves three to four inches per year towards the Aleutian Islands. When one plate moves under another one, it creates tremendous stress and causes the plate to rebound upward or downward, displacing a huge volume of water. The process called subduction is the main cause of tsunamis. My name is Gerard Fryer. I'm senior ge geophysicist at the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, so I'm one of the people responsible for issuing tsunami warnings. Basically what we're doing, we're spending our time looking for earthquakes, because earthquakes generate by far the greatest number of tsunamis. All the Hawaiian Islands are at risk for tsunamis all the time. Uh, and by far the greatest risk, uh, the commonest, is going to be a tsunami coming at you from across the ocean. The Big Island also has its own earthquakes. Uh, and it had the two notable ones, 1975, the Kalapana earthquake, which we now know was a magnitude 7.7, .7, uh, and the Ka'u earthquake of 1868, which we now know is a, about a 7.9. Both of those generated tsunamis that were especially severe on the Puna and Ka'u coast. Uh, we could conceivably have an earthquake like that on the Kona side, and that would be bad news not just for the Big Island, but also for the rest of the state, because the tsunami would sweep up the islands. Um, that's not a very high probability, by far the likeliest location for a big tsunami generating earthquake in, in, in the Big Island is uh, either the south flank of Kilauea or the southeast flank of Mauna Loa, so somewhere along, along the Punaka'u coast. In addition to being vulnerable due to the position of the Pacific Ocean, Hilo on the Big Island of Hawaii has suffered extensive loss of lives and destruction because of the characteristics of Hilo Bay. The bay is shallower in the middle than on the immediate adjacent sides, producing a refractive effect and focusing the energy on Hilo. Another factor that has contributed to this loss of life and property in the past is that Hilo used to be a seaport town built right down to the water's edge. It was these oceanfront properties that took the brunt of the force. The Bayfront Business District was utterly devastated by the 1946 tsunami. The town's neat appearance was transformed into a surreal landscape with jumbles of buildings off their foundations, splintered wood everywhere, enormous boulders dropped where the waves left them, and goods and implements strewn everywhere. Parts of buildings stood at odd angles and the whole landscape became a distorted conglomerate. The compelling stories of tsunami survivors reveal the cultural development of Hawaii. Importantly, these stories provide a connection with the past and together with scientific information, educate people about this powerful force of nature. This was early in the morning, about 
seven o'clock, I was really getting ready to go to work. Then I hear this car running up and down the street, tooting his horn and yelling, tidal wave, tidal wave. I'm thinking, oh yeah, tidal wave, April Fool, that's April Fool's. I put on my radio, then I heard about the tidal wave coming into Hilo. When I went downtown, my work was downtown. Then I could see all that commotion downtown, you know, tidal wave had hit and the buildings were gone and, and I could see the trucks going by with dead bodies taking them up to the hospital to be identified. There was a town, Shimachi town, right by the river, uh, Bayfront. My lady friend lived upstairs of Shimachi. There was a row of stores and buildings and she lived upstairs. And downstairs were some stores. And my lady friend lived there, but she had gone off to work, so she left her baby with her mother. Her mother, she lived in that house, right sea level. And that house was taken by the tidal wave, but she got out, she ran across the bridge, and the wave caught her with the baby in her arm, and they found her in Moelo River with the baby tightly held in her arms. The 1946 tsunami, again, was uh, a very unfortunate tragedy, but it helped to make change. Um, back then, when that particular event occurred, one of the first points at which maybe detection could have occurred off the coast of Alaska and the Aleutians, it was almost immediately inundated, which then prevented them from warning other communities. There was no real Pacific-wide warning system or detection system in that, at that time. So as the waves were approaching Hawaii, there was no indication to the community. There were a very unsuspecting community here in Hawaii, not knowing what that threat was. Uh, since then, advancements and improvements have been made to establish a Pacific-wide uh, deep ocean buoy tracking system, monitoring system. We have much better uh, advancements and awareness of what's happening with an event as it unfolds, which puts us in a much better position to forecast, predict what we're going to see, and keep the public informed and guide their decisions. So the 1946 really was maybe the turning point with improving the tsunami warning system, detection system, and advancing us forward. Today, commercial and residential structures cannot be built in these waterfront areas. Hilo's overall appearance today can be attributed to tsunami impact planning. The great thing about Hilo is that you know, after it was clobbered in 1946 and 1960, it retreated from the ocean. So, so the area of greatest hazard is now parkland. Um, could we get something significantly bigger than those tsunamis and cause significantly more flooding? Yes, there's no question. Um, the worry is if we, if we get an earthquake like the Japan earthquake in magnitude 9, if it's in exactly the right spot in the Aleutians, then it's bad news for Hawaii. The good thing about uh, this situation is that we will know that it is one of these bad things, one of these bad tsunamis, and we'll be able to give you a four hours warning. Um, and we have a pretty darn good idea of how far inland it will get. And, and, and that information is, is, uh, has been turned over to the counties and it's being incorporated into the emergency response plans. So it is possible to evacuate from it. But yes, Hilo could be hit again. The goals of the Pacific Tsunami Museum are to prevent loss of lives in tsunami events by promoting public tsunami education and to preserve the social and cultural history of Hawaii. The museum also serves as a living memorial to those who lost their lives in past tsunamis. The museum opened its doors to the public in 1998. The museum has expanded and enriched its exhibit to capture both the human stories and provide the scientific explanations of the tsunami events portrayed in keeping with its mission. And continue today with the docents and others who contribute to Pacific Tsunami Museum's visitor services and growth. I'm Mildred Uchima and I, I live in Hilo. I have lived in Hilo all my life. 
Not only that, I have been a docent at the Pacific Tsunami Museum for over 20 years. And I really enjoy visiting the many people who come to from all over the world, not to mention the Kama'ainas who come, and the school children from all over the islands. The Pacific Tsunami Museum is a one-of-a-kind museum in the fact that it deals with disaster. Some people might say, oh, it's a, such a gruesome place, but our main purpose is so that there will be no death involved with tsunami. As long as you learn to run away, take care of yourself, and don't go to the ocean when you see it acting funny. Nature provides warning signs that everyone should be aware of. If you see a marked recession of the ocean, hear a roaring sound coming from the sea, or feel a strong earthquake while at the seashore, head to the higher ground immediately. If you hear the warning sirens sounding, turn on a media source to find out what has happened and how long you have to evacuate. Know whether you live or work in an evacuation zone by checking the front page of your phone book or visiting the museum's webpage and using the map tool to enter your address. It is not a matter of if, but when the next tsunami will strike our shores. Be aware, be prepared, be safe, and visit the museum to learn more.